Wow, where do I begin? Ramadan is the most holiest month on the Islamic calendar. And Allah has told us that during this time, the gates of Jannah are going to be open and the gates of Jahannam are going to be locked. So what better time for us to stock up on rewardable acts? We cannot tell how many more years we're going to see another Ramadan. So we must invest in this one as if it's our last. But with everything, preparation is key. And Ramadan is not just about food. So today we're going to be looking at how we can best prepare, what extracts of worship we can do, and what are the rewards therein. Ramadan is not just about abstaining from food and drink within the daylight hours. It's also about complete rejection of sins. It's a time when we can evaluate our lives and think about how we live them. And lots of people use this opportunity to introduce positive changes into their daily routines. For example, I took my shahada during Ramadan, and I know loads of sisters who started wearing the hijab during this time as well. The Prophet, peace be upon him, is reported to have said, Truly is lost whoever hears my name and does not invoke blessings upon me. Truly is lost whoever catches Ramadan and he misses the chance to get his sins forgiven. Truly is lost whoever catches his parents in their lives until they become old and yet he misses the opportunity to attain paradise through honouring and taking care of them. So we can really see how significant Ramadan is. So Aisha, on that note, how can we best prepare for Ramadan? Well, the best way to prepare for Ramadan is I can only answer that question by this hadith. And Aisha radiallahu says, Allah's messenger, peace be upon him, never fasted an entire month other than Ramadan. And I haven't seen him fast more than he did in Sha'aban. And why he, the peace be upon him, did so is because Osama, Osama bin Ibn Zaid, sorry, mouthful there, <laughs> inquired, O messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, I never find you fasting in any other month like you do during the month of Sha'aban. The Prophet, peace be upon him, responded, that is a month that the people neglect. It comes between Rajab and Ramadan. It is a month in which deeds are raised to the lords of the world. I love my deeds be raised while I am fasting. And so not only physically and mentally are you preparing yourself, but you're also gaining that blessings and rewards as well. So, exactly. Yes. And the reason I like that, someone also said to me that it's a bit like a runner preparing for a race, like yeah. warming up. Yeah. So you can really hit the ground running exactly. in Ramadan. Mashallah. I know a lot of people who start three months or even six months before mm. Ramadan just preparing for it yes. and getting into the routine. But that's true. And uh, in the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, uh, his companions, they would make du'a for six months leading up to Ramadan yeah. that it would be accepted. Yeah. And for six months after Ramadan that their previous one was accepted. Yeah, so, mashallah. you know, it's like a continual thing rather yeah. than just a month. Yeah. Have you got anything to add, Anissa? I mean, for me, it would be stay focused. I think sometimes we can get carried away with Ramadan. I mean, we live in a like Western society, so Christmas, you know, it's all about partying and things like that. And for what I've seen, you know, people do go over the, uh, you know, over the top, especially with the food and stuff. Mm. I mean, I'm, you know, somebody who, okay, really, you know, focuses on preparing and I try and make sure that my rump, my iftars are small rather yeah. than big, you know. And I think people, you know, have turned the month in, of fasting into feasting, mm. you know, so they so they actually lose the whole essence of it. Mm. So try and prepare, but pay, um, but stay focused, yeah, you know, that's, that's a good actually question. so that you can get the blessings of the month. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why you should fast before Ramadan, yes. so you can prepare yourself how you should eat yeah. as well. That's yes. it, because the Prophet, peace be upon him, used to break his fast on one day only. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. the Not nutrition so and the dates and the yeah. sugar that's and you know, stuff. Um, but how many, you know, iftars do we go to that are huge, you know, and mm. people, they're not doing the right preparation, yeah. you know. Um, remember, it's a, a month that we're supposed to remember the poor, not become extravagant, mm -hmm. you know. That's it. So, you know, stay focused before Ramadan and, and you know, inshallah, you know. Spend less time in the kitchen and more time yeah. reading the Quran and yeah. the Bikr, isn't and, it? And charitable good deeds and you know but I think it's important that we should mention as well about the times that um, women sisters are prohibited from fasting mm. such as when you're menstruating or uh, after childbirth mm. you know just when you build that momentum mm. you have to break it so how, how do you deal with that Liz? exactly I think I find that so hard because as you say you do get so used to it and then you you know you've got a few days where you can't fast and you know especially if it falls at the end or something yeah. it can be really horrible so you know I know some sisters that try and avoid caffeine or really sugary things during that time so obviously your body doesn't get too used to it or, you know, doesn't really, you know, sort of gorge themselves during that time yeah. so that, you know, you don't, you know, don't sort of build up. Yeah. One thing that I try to do is I, I do more at, at home and give my mum a rest, maybe. Because, oh, you know, so you can't go to Taraweeh and pray. So just, you know, help, 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 help some more because that's we've got it, more exactly. free time. But still, you can listen to Quran, you know. Yeah. 
So there's make still a, you, yeah, you could make use of it. But it's really important because I remember during my first Ramadan, I actually didn't know that women didn't fast while they're menstruating, oh, and yeah, I fasted yeah. the whole thing. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, so but it's really important that we remind sisters of these times. Yeah, another reward that you can gain from actually feeding a person who is fasting. You know, when they break their fast, you can provide oh, yes. them food, and then exactly. Charlie, you get rewarded for that. So yeah, yeah maybe take some iftar to the mosque. Yeah, there's a lot of people who go there who exactly. don't have family and everything. Mm, that's yeah. it. I think we all know that Ramadan is a time when we abstain from eating and drinking during daylight hours. But what else is Ramadan about? What other things should we be doing or not doing, Anissa? I mean, it's, yeah, like you said, it's not just about the food aspect. It's about self-restraint, um, anger, you know, mm. <laughs> road rage. <laughs> mm. You know, I think we have to remember that it's about a personality change, you know, and it's a time to reflect within oneself, you know, look at, you know, how you are. I mean, for me, I love it because it's like a month for my dean, you know, we get caught up working mm. or with children or with family for the rest of the year but this is like a month you know purely for yourself and you know to kind of you know adjust and have a look to see you know where you can make the changes mm. how you can improve yourself and I remember you know um, one of my Ramadans I mean being a revert it was really difficult for me um, and because I didn't have the family aspect and I thought oh my gosh you know I'd feel lonely mm. but one of my you know, most memorable Ramadans was actually alone with my newborn baby in a room and I was staying with a brother and sister and they'd bring me my iftar and my suhoor in the morning mm -hmm. and I was just left with me and my baby in the Quran and you know I was able to complete it and do my du'as and dhikr. It's a real so, opportunity to reassess your relationship with Allah. Definitely well, but you know I think sometimes you know because of people get caught up with the celebration aspect mm -hmm. of things they kind of you know you know get worried oh but from a revert's point of view, I think sometimes, you know, rather than looking at it that, you know, negatively, take in the positive and mm. say, well, alhamdulillah, instead of me being in the kitchen, like you said, mm. so much cooking, then, you know, mm. inshallah, I'll spend it with myself in seclusion. And yeah. I think, you know, And it's yeah. not just about abstaining nice. from food. You know, yeah. you have, your eyes are fasting, your mouth yeah. is fasting. Yes. You need to fast from technology, I mm. think. You know, don't spend too mm. much time on the internet. Mm. Any mobile time, phones. mobile phones, TV, I think all of that, you know, that exactly. month is yeah. just building that relationship and getting closer exactly. to Allah. Yeah, that's really good and advice. And also, sorry, can I interrupt this point, is that, you know, when you're reflecting for that month, you should also reflect on how you can continue that throughout the whole yes. year. Yeah. Because I think Definitely. we're so focused on, you know, how to perfect our deen, our iman for that month that, you know, once it's gone, <laughs> that's, that's it. it, we can go back to normal life. But that's you should it. try and continue that. our daily routines, yeah. exactly. inshallah. There are a multitude of blessings in Ramadan, but all of us are looking for that special night, Layla Tal Qadr. Mm. And again, going back to my first Ramadan, I can remember, I keep hearing Layla Tal Qadr and I didn't know anything mm. about it. Yeah. So Aisha, what do we know about this night and, and what's it all about? Well, I can only answer that question again um, when Allah SWT says in Surah Al-Qadr, Verily, we have sent it, this Qur'an, down in the night of Al-Qadr, which means decree. And what will make you know what the night of Al-Qadr is? The night of Al-Qadr is better than a thousand months, mm. i.e. worshipping Allah in that night is better than worshipping Him a thousand months, which is 83 years and four months. So we should feel that, you know, from our hearts that, the, you know, blessings are coming down. And, you know, looking at Layla Al-Qadr um, in Ramadan, you know, we, it's at the end of the month. And at, towards the end of the month, you know that Ramadan is about to end. Mm. And it's a blessing in itself because mm. Allah is like that. F you're searching for a specific night and how merciful he is that he increases the reward. So you can just, yeah. you know, go in there, finish it tired. like on a yeah. on a good note and like, you know, reap as many benefits as you can. Well, we I know so. it's in the last 10 of yeah. um, Ramadan and it's the odd night. So 21, 23, 25th. And there's a reason why Allah has not, you know, made it black and white. It's that day. Yeah. So it's, it's, that's why within that last 10 days, it, the, the blessings and the rahmah that you get, subhanAllah, yeah. going to the masjid and staying there throughout the night, the that, is, that is the yeah. best feeling from Ramadan. Exactly. So towards the end of Ramadan, God increase our abada and be, you yeah. know, be doing as much as we possibly yeah. can because it could be any one of those yeah. nights, yeah. couldn't yeah. it? Exactly. <laughs> Inshallah. Exactly.